let's solve the equation e to the 2x minus 4e to the x equals 21. Now, you can rewrite e to the 2x. That can be e to the t um, 2 times x or e to the x times 2. And e to the x times 2, well, when you're multiplying th things, you can, you can rewrite this as e to the x quantity to the second, right? So think about it. You've got to, there's a lot of working backwards on things. There's a lot of review of some old formulas. But e to the x to the 2 is the same as e to the power x times 2. And when you have x times 2 as your exponent, you can just as well write 2 times x as your exponent because multiplication, you can switch the order. So 2 times x, another way to write that is just 2x. Don't think of just the 2 and the x glued together. So often we just say 2x without thinking about what it really means. But it's 2 times x. And 2 times x is the same as x times 2. Okay, the purpose of rewriting it this way is, look, there's an e to the x here, there's an e to the x there. We can replace every e to the x we see with a u, and we'll have u squared minus 4u equals 21. That's a quadratic equation. Let's subtract 21 on both sides. Fact to the left side, u, u minus 7 quantity times u plus 3 quantity equals, 20, equals 0. Excuse me. Um, it's a good thing that we had a 0 on one side before factoring, so that if we factored without having a 0 on the other side, that would just waste time. Okay, so we, we have this quadratic equation, and if factoring didn't work, we would have just completed the square. But fortunately, factoring worked. It's faster to factor than complete the square, but if we didn't see any factoring, we could have completed the square. Now we'll apply the zero product property. u minus 7 equals 0, or u plus 3 equals 0. Don't substitute back yet. First solve for u. So u equals 7, or u equals negative 3. Now that we have u by itself here, we have u by itself here. Go ahead and replace the u with e to the x. So we have e to the x equals 7, or e to the x equals negative 3. For the first equation, e to the x equals 7, by the definition of logarithm, we can turn that into x equals log base e of 7. Or if you want to write that differently, you can use the shorthand notation. Log base e you can replace with ln instead. So you can have x equals ln of 7. For the second equation, e to the x equals negative 3, that has no solution because the function f of x equals e to the x has range 0 to infinity. So the values of e to the x, no matter what you plug in for x, no matter what you plug in for x, whether you plug in a positive number for x or a negative number for x or a 0 for x, whatever you plug in for the input x, e to the x, the value of, of e to the x, this is what range is about. It's what you get as output of this function. And this function's output formula is e to the x. The output is always bigger than 0. So you could never get e to the x equals negative 3. OK, so arguing that e to the x equals negative 3 has no solution due to the range of the function e to the x is preferred. But if you want an alternate argument, here it is. You can start from the equation e to the x equals negative 3. You can apply the definition of logarithm and get x equals ln of negative 3. But you can't stop there. Don't be done there. You've got to now say ln of negative 3 is undefined because the domain of every logarithm is 0 to infinity. Right, ln of negative 3, as we write it down, sounds like it makes sense, but you've got to stop and go, wait a second, x equals, well, that's not a number, because ln of negative 3 is undefined. Because earlier we said that the domain of every logarithm, including the natural logarithm, is 0 to infinity. So the fact that we're trying to feed in this input of negative 3 doesn't work. OK, let's simplify an expression instead of solving an equation. OK, so for our practice question here, let's simplify 9 to the power log base 3 of x minus 5. So you can replace the 9 with 3 to the 2. OK, that's valid. 9 is the same as 3 to the 2. So we can make that replacement. And then here, we need to apply a law of exponents, so or a formula of exponents. So 3 to the 2 to the log base 3 of x minus 5 is multiply those exponents. We have 3 to the now the exponent is 2 times log base 3 of x minus 5. Now we want to use a formula that we saw recently, but we can't yet because of this 2 in the way. But there's a law of logarithms we can apply first. So that 2 moves from being the coefficient in front of the logarithm to becoming the exponent of the previous input to the logarithm. So now we have 3 to the power log base 3 of quantity x minus 5 to the second. Now that we have this 3 to the and log base 3 of, there's a recent formula we looked at that lets us say that that's going to all simplify to x minus 5 quantity to the second. Now don't, at this point, after all this good work, try to distribute the 2. The 2 doesn't distribute. This is really x minus 5 times x minus 5. And if you FOIL that out or distribute x minus 5 times x minus 5, you have x squared minus 5x minus 5x plus 25. And if you collect like terms, you'll have x squared minus 10x plus 25. So we're done with the problem here. But let's point out something very important. 
Know the difference between expressions and equations. We typically simplify expressions and solve equations. It's incorrect to really use the language solve for an expression. We didn't solve this. We didn't solve for x. And I think this, this is a very important distinction to make. At no point should you set x squared minus 10x plus 25 or any earlier expression equal to 0. We never set x squared minus 10x plus 25 equal to 0. We never set um, x minus 5 quantity squared equal to 0. We never set 3 to the log base 3 of x minus 5 quantity squared equal to 0. We never, there's no equals 0 even to this original expression here, right? So don't work on solving the equation x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 0. That wasn't the question. The question also didn't ask, because it would be the same question, what values of x make this original expression at the top equal to 0. We never set 9 to the log base 3 of x minus 5 equal to 0. If, if that were the question, we would have started by building that equation in the first place. But that wasn't the question. So know the difference between an equation and an expression, because usually there's a different task. When asked to simplify an expression, don't work on solving an equation. That's answering the wrong question, and that can't earn full credit. You've got to make sure to understand what each question is asking. OK, consider the equation e to the x equals negative 8. As your interactive question, select the most correct response, both in terms of the actual mathematics as well as vocabulary. Which, which of these is using the, the language correctly? So this is your interactive question. Th you know, select which sentence is really most true. So the equation e to the x equals negative 8 does not exist because 0 to infinity is the range of the function f of x equals e to the x. The domain of e to the x equals negative 8 is 0 to infinity, so no solution. Uh, the equation e to the x equals negative 8 is not true because 0 to infinity is the range of the function f of x equals e to the x. The equation e to the x equals negative 8 has no solution because 0 to infinity is the domain of the function f of x equals e to the x. The equation e to the x equals negative 8 has no solution because 0 to infinity is the range of the function f of x equals e to the x. The range of e to the x equals negative 8 is 0 to infinity, so therefore no solution. So um, some of these are factually incorrect. Some of these are um, the right idea, but the language is really wonky. So, so look at these carefully and select the correct response.